it's good to think clearly, right? It's good to think through our challenges and our problems. But the question that we have to look at within ourselves is what happens when that loop doesn't stop? What happens when we think the same thoughts we've been thinking for 20 years? What happens when we don't feel like we're moving forward in a positive direction because we feel stuck? And that's really at the core of what tapping does so well. It helps the brain and the body get unstuck. So Nick, I have been following you and your sister tapping for quite a few years. And I actually do notice when I do the practice, I do feel a sense of calm or whatever I'm tapping for. So um, you said a key thing when you do it, right? That's the biggest struggle with everything. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what it is. Like, do we actually do the thing that makes us feel better? Can you tell us what's going on when you're tapping? Yeah. What the latest research in really for those research minded and oriented people shows is that when we physically tap on these endpoints of meridians of our body, while focusing on the stress, the anxiety, whatever's going on in our lives, we send a calming signal to the amygdala in the brain. And a lot of your listeners and viewers will know that the amygdala is that fight, flight, or freeze response center in the brain. So when we're stressed, and it can be about anything, it can be a little email that we got, it could be a text that rubbed us the wrong way, or it can be a serious life situation with all different levels of stress. When we are stressed, our amygdala is firing that fight or flight response part of our brain is, is firing and our body is being activated. So what tapping does is it reduces that firing of the amygdala, it reduces that stress response. And that's why it can work on so many things. Could you just tell us a little bit about how you found this? Yeah, so my first introduction to tapping uh, was actually in 2003 at a Tony Robbins event. So I, don't, I know everyone knows oh, who, yeah. who yeah, Tony yeah. is and um, I had gone through a couple of his courses, so at the time, I must be 24, 25 years old, and he did a little demonstration of tapping and was up on stage and just said, you know, you do this and you do this, and he'd recommended it, so I, I checked it out. So I started reading books about it, um, learning some stuff online, and for the following couple of years, it was just trying it out, right? So something would happen, a friend would be upset or their shoulder would hurt, Whatever's happening, I'd say, I learned this tapping thing, should we just do it? And it's one of the beautiful things about tapping that when you know it, you can share it with someone else. I mean, certainly there's practitioners and there's deeper work that we can talk about, but in terms of like, hey, I, I'm feeling down today, I'm feeling anxious, my shoulder hurts, there's something that isn't flowing in my body, right? Something that doesn't feel right, you can do this tapping process. And uh, I spent the next couple of years just using it just learning about it and being a passionate advocate for it and then in 2007 i had the inspiration to make a documentary film about it uh no money credit cards and credit lines wow. zero filmmaking equipment um mm. zero filmmaking experience it was just like okay we went online we bought a bunch of equipment um i remember so clearly sitting in my little 500 square foot apartment and with my younger sister Jessica, who you mentioned, and one of my best friends from high school, unpacking boxes and going like, is this a light? I mean, it looks like a light, <laughs> doesn't it? But, uh, you know, and then you just go on YouTube and you figure things out and uh, just, I mean, I was 29 at the time, so a little bit of being passionate, naive, caring deeply about something and just going with it. Um, and we spent the next year filming all sorts of things like you do with any film, but especially when you don't know what you're doing, tons of junk, just trying stuff. And, uh, but then we got these great interviews from experts like Jack Canfield from Chicken Soup for the Soul, mm -hmm. Cheryl Richardson, like all these amazing uh, people who are using tapping. And we then brought people in from outside. We actually brought 10 people together for an event uh, where they weren't familiar with tapping. We tapped with them, we showed it on camera mm -hmm. and um, we released that documentary in 2008. And, now, you know, 13 years later, I've just spent the last decade plus sharing the film, summits, online events, you know, programs, books, a couple of New York Times bestselling books, and, and then yeah. the app, all with the mission to get people to use this tool, all with the mission to give people the experience and to show just how powerful it is in changing people's lives. So we were so blessed to have an interview with Scarlett Lewis. Yeah. Can you speak... Um to what that was like to work with her 
clearly she had a lot of an unimaginable grief and um and i too have my my own grief that i'm moving through and my family and so can you talk a little about a bit about the grief in tapping yeah yeah so uh just a little context for people who missed the interview with scarlett you know scarlett lost her son jesse in the sandy hope uh, school shootings and i live in newtown connecticut so that school is 10 minutes from oh, where wow. we're talking right now so in 2012 the business had been running for a couple of years, been doing this work and uh, getting out in the world. And when it, I knew the tapping could help with trauma and grief. And when it's 10 minutes from your house, you have, of course, going to help. So um, we started the Tapping Solution Foundation, then quickly brought in a trauma expert that I had worked with in the past with some work in Rwanda and began to do what we could to just help people, to help them find some peace. Yeah. But we were here and we put out the call and Scarlett reached out to us. She had actually been on my email list and that following Tuesday. So, I mean, we're talking days later after the worst day of her life. I remember so clearly it was a rainy Tuesday night, walking into her house, pictures of Jesse everywhere, his painting, paintings of him in his room, his bedroom. I mean, just, you know, it was just, it just happened. And so Scarlett knew a little bit about tapping. I took her through the process and what we did that night is we just did some tapping to find some physical relief to just like help relax the body a little bit. And I asked her, it's like, what's most, what's the emotion you're feeling most right now? And she was feeling anger and it was actually anger about a different situation. I mean, mm -hmm. she was dealing with so much, right? That, that can't even begin to process the loss of your six year old son four days later. That all I was looking to do in that moment and what the tapping helped to do is to just begin to offload some of the emotional turmoil because we could even have emotional turmoil about other things. I mean, you know, Gene, you can be dealing with grief, but then you're mad about the cable man being late. And that's something that you're dealing with. And like yeah. the cable man being late on top of the things that you're feeling is really a lot. So maybe we go, okay, can we release some of the anger about the cable man being late? And now it's not this burden on the body, right? Um, what she found and what I found uh, with people who are grieving is that we don't we don't tap on the grief, right? Where we, whereas we go, okay, let's clear away this anger. We don't say let's clear away this grief. We clear away all the other stuff. We clear away the regrets, the what ifs, the what if I had done something differently, the anger towards this person or that person, everything that surrounds it. And then what happens when we do that work is then people say, I can actually grieve now like i can actually feel these feelings now that aren't anger and shame and guilt and sadness and whatever else surrounds it i can miss the person i can connect with the person if people are spiritually oriented they often feel like oh my gosh i feel this connection that i didn't feel before because i had all this other stuff clouding it yeah that's so, so true it's like when you can calm down yeah. then you can calm your those decisions yeah come from a place of peace or and even physically so when we when we're on fire when our amygdala is firing the blood flows away from our brains into our arms and legs like wow. it's we literally cannot think as well and that's designed because mm -hmm. fight or flight running away from a tiger don't need anything in the brain just need to act right just need to oh, like yeah. go do things and when you ask people like hey when did you have your best idea or your when were you most inspired <laughs> like there, it's Bathtub. In the bathtub. <laughs> I've never once heard I had the worst day at work. I was so stressed. I was running around doing all, and then I had this insight of how to fix it all. No, we make poor decisions when we're stressed. We make poor decisions when we're sleep deprived and overworked and all those things. So the more we can come back to this place of peace, the better our lives are going to be. Could I ask you, you seem to have such a big heart. And you said that you went to see Tony Robbins, right? Yeah. Yep, Where yep. were you prior? I was living in Manhattan. I was pretty unhappy. Just, you know, had different clients. I had a web development business and just a lot of stuff. Just a lot, just a lot of junk like we have in life. And I saw his face on a learning annex poster. Yes. I don't know if they're there anymore, right? But like, yeah. so I signed up and I went by myself to this Tony Robbins weekend event. And, um, and that was really transforming and just like, I think what Tony does so beautifully, especially in those events, is he teaches you that you can control your life, that you can 
that you can't control everything in your life, but you can control how you feel often. You can make different decisions that your past doesn't control you, that your beliefs about who you are don't have to remain the same, that you can do things in life. And and what's really cool is that he actually came to Newtown, to Sandy Hook. Wow. He came quietly, didn't announce it to the press, um, flew in other shooting survivors that he had come in contact with to create that sense of community for the people who had lost loved ones. So that was really beautiful. And Scarlett invited me to a little hotel room where, where he was, and I was able to meet him in person. And he saw the work that we were doing in Sandy Hook. We became fast friends, and he's now inside the app. He, we have a morning and evening meditation from, tapping meditation from Tony Robbins, and he's also a minority owner in the app. So like from 2003, you know, full circle to actually have him in the app has been exciting. And you mentioned the big heart, it's been rooted all the way through and just trying to make a difference, right? Trying to, I don't think I could have gotten Tony's attention if I tried to get his attention. I was doing work here in Newtown. I was passionate about the work. I felt called to do the work. Um, and I put one foot in front of the other every day to do good work. And then that was recognized. It's totally amazing yeah. and wonderful that you're sharing this with everyone. Honestly, I think you're doing such a great service. You know? Thank you. I mean, it's certainly been, you know, what's what's driven me from the beginning is that it works. And, you know, yeah. Thank well, I you. hope we stay in touch. You really are so even nicer than we thought. <laughs>